Yeah, yeah, powered by Cola and Pepsi. Yeah, an oh. thing, you know, so yes. welcome to uh, Comlaunch TV. Uh, I'm here with John Sean Alton, Gillis. John Gillis, who is working on uh, GIS integration. I think it is. So it's geographical stuff. Yes. Um, I shouldn't move around that much. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry when you're sick now. Um, okay, so maybe you uh, tell us a little bit what you are working on here at the Sprint. All right, um, I'm, I'm working for the uh, University of North Carolina's Ancient World Mapping Center, and we have a, a website that uh, has a lot of integrated um, mapping. And the, let's see, this, this is my, well, that's my particular project. We're also working on a um, uh, firming up a, a very deep software stack that we have for, uh, for open source GIS. So there's a, pro a clone product called Prima GIS, which is like at the very top of that, that software stack. And Kai presented on that um, on Wednesday. Um, so I think to make this really quick, I guess for the benefit of clone users, I can Same. kind of show like a, a typical uh, mapping application in clone. Yeah, sure. All right. So this is a, um, a map of the early users of our portal. So these, these, uh, these users, by setting their location field in their user profile, that location gets geocoded and we get a coordinates of where they are on the globe. And those things are stored. And we're using a JavaScript application here called Open Layers to provide that kind of Ajax slippy map to give you an interface for that. Um, so if we zoom in, right. These tiles are all coming from a, a GIS server, someplace using a, a, an open standard and a protocol to get the, to get the layers. Um, each of these gives you that kind of Google map style pop-up on the location. And then click through these links to get uh, you know, to the members uh, profile on the site. Um, any, of the, any of the content on the site that we've attached a location to can be um, serialized into the keyhole markup language for viewing in Google Earth. So click that link, would launch Google Earth, and see those same places then rendered on, on the globe. So here's a. We can zoom in just a little bit on one of these. Uh, let's see. All right. So here's Chris. Uh, Chris is actually uh, sort of poorly located. But then, so the, your clone your clone content is basically then reflected um, in the Google Earth viewer. So here you're seeing the um, uh, you know the blurb from the, the user's member profile. This link then goes back to the site. Um, mm -hmm. The let's see. The the thing we, we've been talking about. Someone I think it was uh, David Seaband um, realized yesterday that the real low hanging fruit here is to be able to use the Google Earth Viewer as functionality to create a new place mark. So you can create, uh, you know, you can browse around, find items of interest on the globe, create a new place mark. Now this thing, it, the application. Um, serializes into XML, and then we would like to be able to upload that into Plone and create kind of stub for new content in your Plone site. Mm. So this is what you're working on on yeah. the Sprint. Yeah, actually, I mean this this is more of the the idea of that uh, a couple people had that they wanted to work on. I guess uh, that it's going to be left for another time. So we're mostly working on uh, getting your Plone content onto the map, not content from the map. But that's it's an obvious thing for someone to work on, you know. And I don't think it's a lot of a lot of work to do it. I mean, any person that wanted to have a lot of impact in mapping and plone would go out and create the plone product that would let you mm. upload a place mark from Google Earth. Well, I'm personally not using it that much, but it's definitely cool to yeah. have this. Yeah, because you know, for, for a lot of nonprofits, this is the um, this is the best and most up to date, highest resolution imagery that they're going to have any kind of access to from mm. the globe. So let's say like a um, you know small community organization in Africa or you know an environmental organization in Asia or something like that, where you know otherwise they have no access to data at all. This is the only way they have any maps of like say um, what their coastline looks like or what you know um, uh, you know what the river looks like, what the boundaries of these things mm -hmm. are. And so for them, it's basically it's you know it's free data about the real world that then they can start um, you know if they had Plone, 
or I mean, people are doing this for other sites too, but they can start uh, rolling those into their site. Cool, cool. Uh, where do we get that? Uh, where do we get the, the product itself? Yeah. Oh, um, if you want to play with it or um, yeah, there's uh, check it out, maybe help. Yeah, there's we have links through the um, through the Sprint Wiki, mm -hmm. which I don't have a page up at the moment. Um, yeah, but we put the URL in the yeah. uh, in the show notes. Yeah. Okay. Then thanks. It's a lot I, of fun. Yeah. Thanks. It's a lot of fun too to see this. What's happening here?